G'day everyone, sorry it's been so long in between videos, it has been a busy few weeks but we're back now, and in this video we're going to quickly adapt the health bar from this tutorial. If you haven't seen that yet, there is a link in the description, so definitely follow along with that video now, and you'll have everything you need to get started with this video. We're also going to be adding in a overlay effect that appears when our player takes damage. So to start, I have the player health script on my player game object and it already has all of the UI elements assigned. The UI is set up in the exact same way as the original tutorial. We've got the background image. We've got the back health bar, which changes color and shows the chip away effect. Then above that, we've got the front health bar and the health text. The only difference is that I don't have a frame like in the other video. I'm going for a more simple aesthetic for this game, but feel free to improve on this design. Jazz it up a little bit, add some bells and whistles. So in the original tutorial, we debugged our health bar using the old input manager. And you probably encountered a few errors while following along with that. So if we head to the player scripts folder and open up the player health script, down in update, we've got these two if statements that use the old input manager. If you've still got these statements in your code, you can delete them now. And using our awesome interact system, we'll be setting up some interactables to damage and heal our player. So I'll save that and head back into Unity. I'll focus on my player game object. And I'll add a cube into the scene. We'll rename this to damage player and assign it a nice threatening red color. We'll add on an event only interactable component and change the prompt message to be damage player. Remember when creating new interactables, we want to assign it to the interactable layer so that it can be picked up by the raycast. Now down in the on interact event, we'll hit the plus button and drag in our player. That'll give us access to all of the scripts and components on that game object. So we want to access the player health script and call the take damage function. We'll pass in a value of 20 here. Now we can duplicate the damage cube and rename it to be heal cube. We'll give it a nice friendly green color, change the prompt message to heal player. And instead of calling the take damage function, we want to call the restore health function. So now if we hit play, we'll walk up to the damage cube, hit E, and we take damage. We walk up to the heal cube, and it restores our health. Perfect. Now that we know our health bar works, let's add in an overlay effect for when our player takes damage. We'll click on the player UI canvas, We'll head up to create UI and create a new panel and we'll rename this to damage overlay. Down in the project window, I'll head to the UI folder and I've got an image here which is transparent in the middle and fades to red towards the edges. So this shouldn't be too difficult to recreate using Photoshop or GIMP. When you import the image, you wanna make sure to set the texture type to sprite 2D and UI and make sure that alpha is transparency is checked. So we'll drag that onto the damage overlay game object, onto the source image of the image component, and we'll turn the alpha up to full. There we go, that's starting to look a little bit more threatening. Now we'll head back into our player health script, and we'll write some code to make our overlay image appear when we take damage. At the top of the class, we'll add in a header attribute for all of our health bar properties. We'll pass in health bar for the string value here. Then we can just copy and paste this underneath to make a header for our damage overlay properties. Under that, we want a public image and we'll call this overlay. And this is where we're going to drag our damage overlay game object. Next, we want a public float called duration. And this is how long the image stays fully opaque. Then we want a public float called fade speed and this controls how quickly the image will fade. Finally, we want a private float called duration timer. And this is just a timer to check against the duration. 
Now down in the update function, we wanna to check to see if the alpha of the image is greater than zero. So our overlay is of type image. And so we can access and change the color value of this component here. And the only time we're gonna increase the alpha of our overlay is when we call the take damage function. So if overlay.color, and you can see here that color.a represents the alpha component of the color, zero being transparent and one being opaque. So if our alpha value is greater than zero, then the image is not fully transparent. Then we wanna increment our duration timer. Duration timer is plus equal to time dot delta time. Next, we wanna to check to see if our duration timer is greater than our duration. So if our timer has been counting for longer than the duration value that we set up here, then it will run the next block of code. So if the alpha of our overlay is greater than zero and our duration timer is greater than duration in here, then we wanna fade the image. For this, we're gonna need a local float called temp alpha. And we can assign this straight to the alpha value of our overlay image. Next, we want to decrement the temp alpha value. So temp alpha is minus equal to time dot delta time times fade speed. And then finally, we'll plug the temp value back into the alpha of our overlay image by typing in overlay dot color is equal to a new color. And the color constructor takes in four parameters. We've got the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. And the fourth parameter is the alpha channel. So for the first one, we wanna pass in overlay.color.r, overlay.color.g, and overlay.color.b. And then we'll plug in the temp alpha into the alpha channel. So to explain what's happening here, for every tick of update, the temp value gets set to the alpha of the image. And then we decrement the temp value and then we assign that back into the alpha channel. So this will create a nice fading effect for us until the alpha of the image is less than zero. So now there's just a few things left to do. We'll copy and paste this code down in our take damage function. And instead of using temp alpha, we'll set this straight to one. We also wanna set our duration timer to zero so that each time we take damage, the timer resets. Now we can head up into the start function and paste the code once more. And we'll set zero in here so that the image gets cleared at the start of the game. Awesome, so let's save that, head back into Unity. We'll click on our player game object. We've got our damage overlay header, but we don't have our health bar header. So let's head back into the script and check it out. And I can see here that I've put the header on top of a private value. So I'll just cut and paste that and pop it on top of the first public value, which is max health. Okay, so we'll save it and I'll head back into Unity. Now we've got our health bar header and our damage overlay header. We'll drag in our damage overlay game object, set the duration to two, and we'll set the fade speed to 1.5. Now if I hit play, let's test it out and see if it works. I'll walk up to the damage cube Hit E. You can see that the effect stays on the screen for two seconds and fades away. Now that feels a lot more impactful. So we'll head back into the player health script down in the update function, just inside the if statement where we're checking if the alpha is greater than zero. We'll just pop in if health is less than 30, then we can just call return. This is gonna pause our duration timer before it gets to this point, so that duration timer will stop ticking and it will never start the fade process. So we'll save that once more, head back into Unity, hit play, and we'll drop our health below 30, and the effect stays on the screen. Now if we walk up to the heal player cube and heal ourselves, it'll wait two seconds and then it'll fade away. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to use this logic for a shooter and just a standard blood effect. You can make a sprite sheet with ice creeping onto the screen for a frost effect or green and purple bubbles for poison. The code shown in this video can be used for any kind of damage overlay that you need in your game. Alrighty, that's all we're gonna be covering in this video. Thank you so much for watching.
I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe. And in the next video, we're going to start looking at enemy AI. We'll talk a little bit about finite state machines and build our first state, a basic patrol state for our enemies to navigate around the map. I'm really excited for this topic. It's going to be quite in depth, but I think we're going to create some pretty cool stuff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.